Now, registering keys. Registration is required when the key, the key fob, or the ECU has been changed. You can register a maximum of five keys. The security light will flash when there isn't a key in the key slot. Use a registered key to turn the ignition on. Press the power switch twice without depressing the brake. You have 120 seconds after you do that. Now let's just back up for a minute. Right here. Use a registered key to turn the ignition on. You need a good key, one that's already registered. You need to put it in a slot and press the power switch twice. Now you have 120 seconds to connect your scan tool and select Immobilized Utilities. Select Transponder Key Code Registration from the scan tool memory. Turn the power off and remove that master key, that known good key you had. Insert the unregistered key into the key slot. The security light is going to blink for about 60 seconds. When it goes out, the new key is registered and the security light will go off. The new key is then going to be stored in memory. There is an automatic registration procedure. Insert the transponder key into the key slot. Now this has to be a known good master key. When the security light is blinking once every 1.8 seconds insert the key fob into the key slot. This indicates there are no area. The security light will stop blinking after about a second. The key code has been stored. That's how automatic it is. Remove the key and the security light will start blinking once every 1.8 seconds if there are no failures. A second code, a second key code can be added by following the same sequence. Two keys maximum can be learned with the automatic procedure. Perform the hybrid control ECU registration after this procedure. So in your information system or in this class manual, look up hybrid control ECU registration. Monitor the security light for failure indications. The security light normally blinks about 1.8 seconds unless there's an error. If there's an error, the security light will blink out a two-digit code. The failure codes are 21, two quick blinks and then a half a second pause and one quick blink or flash, flash, flash. That indicates 21. This indicates that the automatic code registration did not work. It failed. 22 indicates that the key was being registered that you're trying to register was already in memory. And code 23 says that, hey, the number of keys registered is already at 5 and you can't do any more. Now remember, with the automatic system, you can only do 2. ECU registration procedure is going to be just as simple. The ECU communicates the ID and it's derived from the key code. So we're going to have an ECU ID, the communication ID, and it's going to be derived from the key code. The hybrid control ECU can be started a limited number of times, somewhere around 20, unless the proper communications ID is stored or registered in the hybrid control ECU. That may seem like words to you, but to me, that says I can go ahead and register an ECU and try to start the car a couple times. And it does so. Hey, I'm done. I give it back to the customer. And then 21 attempts later, the vehicle won't start. So the fact that the ECU, the hybrid control ECU, can be started a lim limited a number of times, somewhere around 20, unless that communication ID is stored. Here's the procedure. A DTC, a Diagnostic Trouble Code, B2799 will be set if the hybrid control ECU has an immobilizer code for a communication error. The communication error is the lack of matching key codes. You're going to 
connect a jumper to the DLC. You're going to connect it to what they call in the DLC CG, which is 4, and then TC. And if you look at TC and 4, uh, TC and CG, that's 4, and pin 13. The special tool, and you see the number there, is used to prevent damage to the DLC terminals. It is basically a jumper lead. So what they're doing is ensuring that someone doesn't take a jumper lead that will move, displace, or damage the cavities in the DLC. Turn the power switch to the ignition position. Press the power switch two times with the brake released. Leave the power on for 30 minutes with that jumper connected. Turn the power off and disconnect the jumper lead from the DLC. Check that the hybrid control ECU starts. The ready light comes on. That's how you check. Now don't forget that the hybrid control ECU can start up approximately 20 times without being registered properly. After programming, the power switch may not start the hybrid system. This is a very important note. We're telling you that after that programming process, the power switch may not start the hybrid system on the first attempt. You may have to depress the brake and press the power switch a second time, so don't panic. This only occurs on the first start after the programming. Clear the code B2799 if necessary, if it's still there. The transponder key ECU and hybrid control ECU must be re registered before the vehicle is powered up. These codes are from the DLC pin 7. That's that 9141 protocol we're telling you about. So when we're talking about the startup system, they have trouble codes. And as I keep saying, there are many, many trouble codes for all the different systems. They always point you in the right direction. So once we told you that, hey, if you're having difficulties or faults with the can or the bean, that's okay. Because your scan tool works on the ISO 91 prot protocol that comes out of pin 7. Let's just discuss some codes. We certainly can't discuss all the codes. Our manual has all the codes in them, but we just don't have enough time here, so we pick some examples. B2271, ignition hold circuit that controls those relays, that IG1 and that IG2, is open or shorted to ground. The B plus supply voltage to AM1 and AM2 is missing. And that could be one of the problems that would set B2271. Or those IG relays are not open or they're shorted to ground. Check the fuses or an open circuit. And you can see there's our AM1 and 2 circuit that we showed you earlier. It's the B plus for the power source control ECU. It was not switched. It went through many fuses and fuse links, but it was always hot. Verify that the fuse and the fuse links are normal, and then check for opens in the connectors or the wiring. 2275 is the STSW signal, an output circuit from the power source control ECU, and it's malfunctioning. It does not reach the hybrid control ECU as that S2 signal that we talked about. Check the wiring and operation of the power source control ECU. Now when you read this type of information, check the wiring, check the operation of the power source ECU, you have to remember that the wiring is simple. It's just back probing to see if you have perfectly good connectors and contacts at the cavities and the wire hasn't been damaged. When we say the operation of the power source ECU, go back and review the startup of the vehicle. Make sure that you know that the power source ECU is always hot, it's supplied with a ground when the push button with the power button is pushed, and make sure that's what we're telling you to do. Make sure that you understand the operation and that's the information we're giving you, the knowledge we're passing along, and then all you have to do is see if it's there. Of course, this is a startup signal, so you're in and reviewing 
the how to start a hybrid up. And if you have this circuit, this code, if you have that B2275, it's one wire, one connector with no fuse. This is not brain surgery. On the right, we have the power source control ECU. On the right, we have the hybrid control ECU. It's one wire that goes between the two. In the information that we were giving you, we said that the power source control ECU circuit was in cavity 39, and it's called STSW. In the hybrid control ECU, it's ST2, or cavity 5. One wire, one connector, and no fuse. It's not that difficult to diagnose this code. But when it comes down to it's not the wire, you have to make sure that you review hybrid vehicle control operation and power source control operation so that you know how to test the power source control ECO or the hybrid control ECO by simply knowing how it operates. The 2278, it's the uh, two power switch signals, the SSW1 and 2, and they're indicating different signals. One's open, one's closed. The switch is bad or there's a wiring problem. Don't make this brain surgery. This is a pull-down circuit with the switches supplying ground. And here's our circuit right here. So when you're dealing with this code, you're at the power source control ECU, SSW1 and 2. On the power switch itself, it's SS1 and 2. And it simply is a circuit that when you press the power switch, these switches close and go to ground. So when you're dealing with diagnostic trouble codes, make sure you read and understand the code. And then if you have to, simply go back to the operation of that circuit